Warum? <lacht> The Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want him make an eye lie down in a green pasture. Him needed eye is our still water, let him restore it, eye soul. Him needed eye, another part of eye, just not for him name's sake. Yay! Though I rasta go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, them comforted I and I. Who no prepared at a table before Ryan at the presence of our enemy, them who no anointed I edu to no aisle, make up on it over. Shale, goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. Me I go dwell in the house of my Lord God. Ja. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the heathen that sitteth in the seat that is can't fall. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and this Lord I see I did till sunrise and sundown. Him I go deal like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Him leap never I go wither, and whatsoever him jewels shall prosper. Let the people of the most high God say, Ja. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Jah shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and them is saved. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jah, oh Jah, 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 shall deliver him from all of them. And I give thanks, and I give thanks, and I give thanks, oh Jah, 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 it was sick player for our time, boy. Oh, you all are down. This is the Blackport, aka Kuku Shodom, where we speak truth to power. Here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. And my name. Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African room, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes, aromas, and even flavors put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot, where they are subjected to some good amount of heating. In the aftermath, they produce food. Yes, sumptuous food. Ironically, they do not even partake in the eating of the food. It is us, the eaters, who do. Yet, every time the ingredients and the black pot rise to the occasion to produce food that they do not participate in eating and enjoying. What lesson can we pick from this? It's a lesson of selflessness, a lesson of generational thinking, and a lesson of sacrifice. My brother, my sister, any nation that does not have these three ingredients is not befitting of being called a nation. It is an empty box. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo. Do you love your country? Are you ready to die for your country like our ancestors did? Or you always make excuses. Oh, our leaders are not good. Our leaders are bad. And for that matter, I will never die for my country. You are rather looking to die for America. You want to die for England. You want to die for Japan. You want to die for China. Yet your name is Kwame Mensah and not Ching Huang Ting. My brother, think wise. They say no matter how bad your house is, you will never point at it in directing someone to it with your left finger. Because in the African tradition, the left is dirty. The less left is supposed to be talking about uh, bad things. No matter how terrible, no matter how poor your house is, you never say, oh, this is my house. It will always be the right finger. That is my house. My brother, my sister, the African people of so much wisdom say, and I quote, that the dance of the madman at the market square is always funny, but not when the madman is your brother. Should I take it again? The dance of the madman at the market square 
is always funny, but not when the madman is your brother. My brother, if we love our nation the way we love our mothers and fathers and brothers, no matter how funny people think our nation is, we will never see it to be funny. We will fight to keep it healthy. We will fight to keep it straight. That is why we are traveling to all 16 regions of Ghana. My brother, my sister, we have conquered half of Ghana already. We are entering into the southern part. This weekend, we are looking at going to the Bono and Ahafo regions. And what we are doing is we go to the schools. We talk to the students. We organize a short quiz competition. We give them prizes. Sometimes we even give uh, money. Yes, 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 cash prizes. And then we hoist high a flag of Ghana after singing the national anthem and form a club known as the Young Patriots Club in every school we go to before we leave. In every region, we go to two schools. We go to a radio station that is most popular in the area to also talk to the rest of the area about patriotism, loving our nation. Why are we called Ghana? Is there a meaning to that name? Yes, we go through that and we look at the rudiments of patriotism. At the end of the day, you see some of the students shedding tears. A lot of them do not want us to go. And the teachers of the school normally want us to return. My brother, it takes us a lot of energy to be able to do this, but we are not complaining. We are happy. We will keep going. Yes, we need your support. Send us mobile money via the number you see. Yes, a Metchat number as well. Or you can send it via our bank account. Yes, yesterday we had 800 Ghana cities from a man who has contributed five times already. Bismarck Lie. Bismarck Lie. I hope I got the name well. I mean, Michimi Fanshi. A name like that. You know, the seventh or the eighth. My brother, he has contributed five times already. Thousand, 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 thousand. He's given us 800 Ghana cities. We are waiting for you as well so that we can go into these areas. Yes. Your presence may not be here physically, but your presence with T-S at the end can represent your presence with a C-E at the end. I love this saying. We started on the 2nd of March and we are ending in May, just next month. It's our prayer that you will hack into our call so that we'll be able to complete the rest of Ghana. Interestingly, other schools that we didn't go to are beginning to call us. Oh, you came to our region, you didn't come to us. You came to our region, you didn't come to us. Next time, it looks like we may just have to go on a full swing tour of all the SHHs in Ghana. To God be the glory. I want to say thank you so much to all those who have contributed. Your names are going to keep flowing here. Keep flowing here. Remember to send us the cash that you have. And also in kind, we are yet to see somebody say, okay, I have a water factory and I want to supply you with water on your journey. Somebody to say, oh, I have a filling station and I want to give you fuel on your run. Yes, or somebody to say, listen, I am a cook. And the region you are coming to, I have a branch there. Please, let's have some of the students come there and eat. Some of your team members can also eat if you desire that. My brother, my sister, thanks so much for hearkening to the call. We appreciate you and we love you. Dash it and come here. It's a black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo. And here we speak truth to power. And I want to say thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you and we love you. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo. Today we have four very important things to look at and I need you to come along. Run it, my unit. The first story says, Elembele Mugabe hijacks Ghana scholarships. Do you know who Elembele Mugabe is? This is Elembele Mugabe. In Ghanaian politics, this man is called Elembele Mugabe for two very good reasons. Number one, he was the MP for the Elembele area for a very long time. Two, Mugabe because they are likening him to Mugabe being in power for so long. In fact, he finally was kicked out because the people were tired and fed up with him. He had been there for too long. He came in on the ticket of the CPP, Nkrumah's party. And you know, in those areas, the Nzima areas, Nkrumah is like a god. Nkrumah should be like a god. Remember, I said a god in the whole of Ghana. 
But amongst the Enzima people, oh, Nkuma is more than just a god. So he rode onto the waves with the CPP colors. And after some time, he decided to jump ships and join the NPP. For whatever reason, only him and his close friends would be able to tell. His father was a very serious stalwart. In fact, a stalwart of the CPP. And he was in Nkrumah's government. Nkrumah chose him as one of his ministers. But he decided to ditch the CPP and go after the NPP. So many people have told me why. But because I've not heard from him, I will not be able to put that out. This is Elembele Mugabe. He's, he and his wife are also owners of one of the popular political newspapers in Ghana called Daily Guide. In the days, it was a very powerful newspaper until the onset of social media that doused the fire that it had illuminated over the years. My brother, my sister, this is Freddie Blaine, Elembele Mugabe. He was the guy who said politics is so sweet that he was ready to sell his mother in order to do politics. He tried to explain, but you know how it is. You go explain tire if you don't get evidence. That's what he decided to do. Freddy Bilay is speaking and he's been caught by the lenses of the news reel. Now there is something known as the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat. And it's from the office of the president to give scholarships to poor people. Freddie Blay cannot be considered poor, but he has found himself there to take advantage of the poor. Allegedly. Run the story, my youth. Watch this. And this is coming from uh, uh, Joy, uh, my Joy Online. And it says, Scholarships Bonanza. Freddie Blay and former IGP's daughters amongst those who grabbed scholarships for the needy. Run the story. And this was originally published by the fourth estate, Manasseh Azure's fourth estate. And reposted here, republished here by Joy Online. Dr. Dennis Adu is, by all indications, an accomplished man. He is the founder and CEO of the Claren Hospital and co founder of BISA, an international award winning health app. His hospital located on a quiet street in the affluent airport residential area in Accra caters for some of the country's elite with deep pockets. He is apparently so good at what he does that he was appointed to the board of the National Health Insurance Authority from 2017 to 2020. Dr. Addo, by all indications, is not a poor man. He's not a man in need, and he's certainly not so desperate to further his education to boost his life chances. Yet, when he decided to pursue a degree in public administration at Harvard University, it was the Ghana government, through its scholarship secretariat, that paid 50031 American dollars for his tuition and living expenses in the United States in 2019. That money came from a fund meant to help the needy, underprivileged Ghanaian students to pursue their education or further their education. But for his political connections and social privilege, it is hard to imagine how a man with Dr. Edu's credentials, not to mention wealth, could be classified as needy and eligible to assess a government scholarship to the tune of over 50,000 American dollars. Dr. Edu describes himself as a, a pioneer member of the New Patriotic Party, the MPP Students Wing, TESCON. He recently uh, contested the NPP's parliamentary primary at Ekrimo. Dr. Edu describes himself as a pioneer, listen all, member of the New Patriotic Party's uh, student wing, the TESCON. He recently contested in the MPP's parliamentary primary at Echima Nwabieja South in the Ashanti region, but lost. In addition to the government scholarship, Dr. Edu 
was also awarded the Cheng Fellowship at Harvard in the course of his studies. He did not respond to our email asking for comments. Whilst there is no explicit information on the financial benefits of the Cheng Fellowship, Harvard University's policy on fellows' remunerations stipulates that generally between 55,000 American dollars and 70,000 American dollars is paid per year depending on experience and the nature of each fellowship assignment. Wow. For his studies at Harvard, therefore, Dr. Edu had two streams of financial support, one from the scholarship secretariat and the other from Harvard University. He was there for two years. The fourth estate has found that Dr. Edu is one of uh, many politically connected and social elites who have been competing with some of the country's poor but brilliant students for funding from the scholarship secretariat. We could not reach him for a response. Many ordinary Ghanaians who apply for assistance from the scholarship secretariat have told us that they face a monumental hurdle in the uh, shape of protocol list that uh, make it next to impossible for them to uh, receive the support they need. They have to compete with politicians, their relatives and associates, as well as socialites and diplomats. After receiving numerous complaints from uh, scholarship applicants, the fourth estate asked in March 2021, for data from the scholarship secretariat on those who have been awarded scholarships in 2019 and 2020. The secretariat initially refused to grant the request, claiming that data was confidential. But the Right to Information, RTI Commission, ordered that personnel information, if a personal information should be uh, redacted and the data released, the commission based its ruling on the premise that the scholarships were funded with public money. The scholarship secretary's response to the RTI request showed that it had spent about 237.6 million Ghana cities and 200 million Ghana cities in 2019 and 2020, respectively, covering both foreign and local scholarships. Note the figures, 237.6 million. And in 2020, they spent 200 million Ghanaian cities to fund scholarships. The, the scholarship secretariat in an agency, yes, under the office of the president, was established in 1960 uh, with the primary purpose uh, of providing local and foreign scholarships uh, to academics uh, gifted but financially needy students. Following the country's liberation from colonial rule, the Nkrumah administration set up uh, scholarships programs, scholarship programs as a means to incentivize and attract top means to uh, incentives, no, to incentivize and attract top uh, talents to uh, bolster the nation's workforce by assisting citizens who lack the financial means of fund to fund their education. In recent years, however, the Secretariat has faced criticism for allegedly uh, perpetuating patronage, then overlooking deserving applicants in favor of those with political and high society connections. That's it away. Now, when you read it further, you will vomit. I have vomited more than 20 times already. You will see Elembele Mugabe the former IGP, and some members of government taking their children and relatives to the secretariat to get scholarships. My brother, remember the fund is for the poor but needy, brilliant students. When these people send their relatives there, the scholarship secretary doesn't look at how brilliant they are and how needy they are, they only consider their political status and then they push them through. A lot of the brilliant poor ones continue to linger in oblivion, in wonderland, like Alice. My brother, can you blame the scholarship secretariat boss? 
He is politically put there. He must go by the whims and caprices of his paymasters, the politicians. When you live in a country where everything is politicized, even the one who becomes the hospital administrator is a political appointment in one way or the other. The one who becomes the head of all the health facilities in Ghana is a politician. That is why power can go off in hospitals and these politicians can come out and say, oh, it didn't really go off. It just blinked and came back because they were politically put in there. It hurts me, my brother. I am angry and mad right now as I'm speaking to you. My brother, look at how brilliant some needy people are. I go to some of the schools and I see a lot of needy people. And I go to the villages and I see more brilliant people, but they are not in schools all because they cannot afford. We're talking about free education, free SHS. That thing only came to demean our standard of education. Students go to school for two months and sit at home for one million months. Before they go back, 80% of the girls are all pregnant. I am touring all these areas in Ghana presently with patriotism. And a lot of the schools we went to, we saw a lot of females with bang belly in Jamaica, as we say. Teenage pregnancies all over the place. In my days, it was all about the book. You only went to school, studied and studied, came home for a few days and went back. We had what was called a long vacation. That was a third term vacation, two and a half months, maximum three months. But today you go to school for two months. Go and sit back home for 78 million months. And the teachers are taking advantage of this, calling them to come for extra classes to pay them privately to teach them. It has defeated your dirty free SHS. The other day when it was published in the Ghana web, that black pastor said he hates the free SHS like Satan. Many did not understand. This is where I am coming from. I am frustrated with this dirty shenanigan. How can you say you are giving people free education? Yet they go to school for just a short period and ask them to go home and get pregnant and return to school. By the time they return to school, those who still want to study, the same teachers are asking them to come for extra classes. But this time around, they would pay the money that the nation does not want them to pay. Is that not foolishness? The foolishness of a free education. What's wrong with us? Now look at Dr. Adu. Come here. Dr. Adu. I wish we had a photo of Dr. Adu. He's a wealthy man. He has his offices in the wealthiest areas in Accra, airport residential area. Those of you who live in Accra here, you won't find a rat at airport residential area. The gutters are extremely clean. Because people who live there have deep pockets. In fact, you will not even hear an owl hoot in the night over there, let alone cocks crowing. You only hear parrots <laughs> and exotic bears in those areas. My brother, if you are looking for a firefly to see in a crowd, not at the airport residential area, go to Choco. If you want to see what a mouse looks like, Kwakwe, do never ever go to an airport residential area. Go to Choco, go to Jamestown, go to Ashima, go to Nima. If you are looking for a praying mantis, you know what a praying mantis is? In the Ghani, we call it Saya Gungong. That insect that goes like that is always dancing with the head like that. Very beautiful insect. You know, Saya Gungong. I don't know how the accounts call it, but the praying mantis, if you are looking for it, don't look for it at airport residential area. That is where you see flowers. You will see magnificence in all its magnificence. That is where you see people with deep pockets. This is where Dr. Edu is. Dr. Edu proudly says that he is a member of TESCON, NPP students in the past. He's a medical doctor, as we are told. My brother, my sister, by this report, this is a big, good guy. He has deep pockets, but he's taking advantage of the poor. 
He's gone in to access the poor people's fund. He goes all the way to Harvard. Over there, he gets another post from the Chang Fellowship where he's paid over $50,000. Some other sources say he's paid up to about $70,000 American dollars. Dr. Edu grabs the money in one pocket and the poor people's money in Ghana in another pocket. Is that not greed? When poor people die, when poor people become miseducated, these people will sit somewhere quietly and say that, ah, what happened? Somebody could have helped them, forgetting that by their actions and inactions, they are indirectly killing some of these people. You steal poor people's food. And when poor people are dying, you play innocent. I don't know, why are they dying? What, what really? What really? You've forgotten that you have gone to steal their food. This is not the first time we see people in government and people with deep pockets still hypocritically going after poor people's food. Ajwasafo went for poor people's food, also got scholarship meant for the poor. We even saw General Mosquito going to get that from the NDC for his own children. My brother, if people like me had gone there with my poor children to go and get it, it would have been laudable. Because how much does a radio presenter get paid in Ghana? In a music industry that is almost dilapidated, how much do I earn? If I go there, every people, everybody will see that, oh, this is a Rasta man who doesn't make so much money. So it is okay. The day I start making money, I will refuse poor people's food. Not because I hate poor people's food, because I want to expose the food to more poor people. I will gladly eat poor people's food every day, but I will not take the food out of poor people's plates. Write it down. This is deep. The Holy Spirit is speaking. I will gladly always eat poor people's food because I remember my origins. But I will never ever take food out of poor people's plates. Jesus. Somebody won't understand. He would have to smoke in Tampi tomorrow before he understands. He may have to drink cocoa in the morning before he understands. He may have to run barefooted from Choco to Tongo and comes back before he understands this. My brother, these are the murderers of our economy and poor people. They take the money that is supposed to be for the poor and the poor continue to be a burden on the economy, on the people. Elembele Mugabe has also gone to get it. I'm seeing some other ministers going to get it. After all, it's free money for all. How many people know this lady? Come here. She's the deputy uh, director. She went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Do we all remember she had a stint with Ajua, uh, is it Ajua, Abna Koko? This was the lady Abna Koko said she had some romantic, lesbian, romantic, whatever, wait. And she got angry and blah, 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 blah. blah. You remember her. It's just a way of making you know her. In 2019 and 2020, the scholarship secretariat spent at least 291,480 pounds sterling. 146,502 US dollars and 7,685 Canadian dollars on 20 influential individuals and the associates of political, the political elite. Jesus, the money is humongously humongous. Jesus have mercy. Run it next, my youth. Watch this. For example, Gifty Owari Mensa, the person who you saw there, her name is Owari Abwaje. Obtained a government scholarship of 18,450,000 £18, pounds. That's 18,450 pounds to study at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom in 2020 to pursue an MSc in development policy and politics. 
and this is somebody who is employed by the government, deputy director, her salary is a huge, yet she went for poor people's money. May they be poor. May all these people taste serious poverty so they will respect poor people. Dr. Edu, I pray for poverty for you. Gift or worry, I pray for poverty for you. Elemele Mugabe, I pray for super poverty for you. When you suffer like poor people, common sense, they say, oh, here my dream. Go back to that story. Oh, here my dream. Now, when you continue, watch this carefully. She was awarded the scholarship three years after she started working for the National Service Secretariat as Deputy Executive Director. In the same year, she acquired Berry Ladies Football Club. Hey, do you understand what I'm saying, Bredry? She acquired a football club called Berry Ladies. She bought it, paying salaries. For over 50 people. But she didn't have money. To pay for her education. She had to go and take poor people's money. Such a dirty woman. Wicked dirty woman. Wicked dirty woman. Wicked dirty people. This woman had money. To go and buy buried. And yet she's extremely arrogant. This woman. They are very cool and gentle. The moment they test political power, they become animals. It's only an animal that will blow food out of a poor person's mouth so that they can continue to be glutinously satisfied. Bring back the story, my youth. Don't dash it away. Bring it back. Same story. My brother, it is sad and it breaks my heart. Did you hear that? She bought a football club paid a lot of money for it. But she didn't have money to go to school. She had to go all the way to take poor people's scholarship and pretend that she is poor. It's popularly known as Halifax Ladies FC, currently playing in Ghana's Women's Premier League. Kai, I wish this was the days of Rawlings. Some of them would be shipped in public. Some would be shaved with broken bottles. And some will have metal pieces in their heads. Run the story. Hey! Jesus have mercy. The photo you saw, that's Joyce. Bawa Mokhtari. She works with the former president, Mahama. This is what she has to say. Leave government scholarships to those who need them. But her party comes into power and almost the same thing is happening. Her party, NDC, when NDC was in power, people like General Mosquito were all getting this. Until we behave like human beings, we will continue to live in the jungle. Write it down. Until we learn to behave like human beings. We will continue to live in the jungle. It hurts me. Go around Ghana and see abject poverty. I was at a Wellembele the other day. My brother, I took 20 cities out of my pocket. And I saw what that could do in the area. The other day, I went all the way to the upper west region of Ghana, La Tuolu, and some other such places. When you take 20 cities out, my brother, you will see and understand what poverty truly is. Yet there are people who beat the system and steal from the poor. I'm sorry we spent so much time on this, but I get so emotional when we treat issues like this. Dash it away, my youth. And thanks so much to the fourth estate. Find time and read the whole story. You will be shocked what is contained in there. Hey! 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 They have it all, yet they will give none. They will still come after what is meant for the poor. 
If this is not demonic, what is it? So sad, my brother. It's terribly sad. Electricity is fluctuating. I'm sure you're feeling it wherever you are. I apologize for that. Normally when they start doing this, they are warning us that Doomsaw is about to hit us. It's very sad. Run the next story, my youth. Jesus have mercy. What a thing. Akufu Ado, fifth best president in Africa. Hey, come here, my youth. Today I chanced upon a write-up in a pro-government newspaper, or better still, government blog, Asasi. They own Asasi Radio. And they boldly put it out that Nana Kufuado is the fifth best president in Africa. Let's find out why this is so. Asasi Radio says, Ghana ranked fifth best governed country in Africa. Who is governing Ghana? The Nana Akufu Ado regime. So for them, it's a feather in their hearts. Wow. Now let's look at it. It's a long writer. Come here, my youth. Watch this. Ghana has been ranked as the fifth best governed country on the African continent and the best governed country in the whole of West Africa by uh, World Economics. Uh, World Economics, a United Kingdom, that's UK-based research organization. Watch this. You know what I'm talking about. In West Africa, Ghana is the best governed country. In the whole of Africa, Ghana is number five. Now, the good governance ranking according to the World Economics is assessed through four main indexes. Now, the indices are corruption, perception, rule of law, press freedom, and political rights. Now, the governance index, as set by the World Economics, gives equal weight to all four criteria set by the researchers. Index numbers, according to World Economics, are rebased and shown on a scale of 0 to 100. Governance, 0 is poor. Governance, 100 is as good as it gets. Corruption index, blah, 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 blah. Next page, my youth. Watch this. And all that. Now, the governance ranking, say, according to the World Economics uh, Ranking Data published on its website, blah, 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 boom, 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 had an index of 69.3, taking the first position on the West African continent as the best governed country in the nation. That is Ghana. Ghana also with a grade of B and with an index of 61.7 secured the fifth position ahead of Senegal. The closest West African counterpart ranked sixth with a grade of C and an index of 53.6. That should away. Nelson Mandela has a saying that I like. He says that, don't judge me by my success or the height I have achieved, but judge me by the number of times I had to rise from every fall. In other words, don't just look at my success. Look at how many times I failed in my struggle before I reached there. You know the sense in that? We do normally not rate people who struggle at the bottom just because they have not hit the jackpot yet. We see them as personas non grata. But that's wrong. That is why in your school, in your mathematics, the teacher will not do well on the final answer that you get. X is equal to 2. No. He will look at the steps, how you struggled, working it out and where you went wrong. Even though you got the final answer wrong, you might score 8 over 10. If you just go and write the answer, X is equal to 2, they will say show working. Do you all remember that in school? That's what Mandela is saying. My brother, let us slap this on Ghana. I am happy if this is the true thing. But my brother, if this is Africa and we in Ghana are ranked as the best in West Africa, then I can imagine what is happening in the other West African countries. 
That's all I can say. If Ghana is the best governed country in the whole of West Africa, then I can imagine what is ongoing in the rest of West Africa. I can imagine what is going on in the Ivory Coast. I can imagine what happens in Togo, Benin, Burkina Faso, Mali. I can imagine what is going on, my brother, in countries like Burkina Faso, Mali, where the military junta has taken over. Ghana is the best governed country in West Africa. Is it true? Sometimes you win a race and nobody claps for you. You know why? Excuse my language. With no offense to anybody. If you are a man, well trained, and you run a 100 meter race with women, and you win the race, they will laugh at you. Instead of applauding you, the applause that you want, they will laugh at you. Or better still, if you have people with disability in wheelchair, and you have your two legs, and there's a 100 meter race, and you win the race, they will laugh at you. It's not about winning the competition. It's about who you competed with. Please write it down. Jesus. It's not about winning the competition. It's about who you competed with. I remember in my days when we were in school. Please don't get offended by this. In school, when we were moving from O level to A level, and they were asking us, oh, what did you get? They asked students, we say, yeah, I got all one, six ones. So I say, yeah, seven ones. You know, yeah, Charlie, eight ones. You know, the Greek students will come forward and say, well, I get two ones, well, I get four twos. So yeah, you try. And the science students, those who studied biology, chemistry, physics, what grade did you get? 68 and a half. Hmm? What grade did you get? Well, I had five fives. In other words, five subjects. You had five, five, five. And two of them, you got six, six. So it's taking your average so high. But they will still applaud you. Because in our educational system, it looks like it is easier to do arts. That's why I said don't get offended. I'm an arts student. I studied science immediately. And then I jumped into the ass and boom, I got back into the science again. It looks like we have found a way to deal with the arts. But the science is still a problem. Look at how we have to go through hell to be able to pass our science examinations. Laboratories have only rats and cockroaches. My brother, we don't even have better test tubes than the chemicals we use. You only draw them and see pictures of them. You go to the laboratory, you don't see them. So when you struggle like that and make a grade, they appreciate you more than the person who reads and has all the materials and he goes to get all ones. It's not a way to take away your achievement, but it's just an illustration. If Ghana is the best governed country here in West Africa, in the West Africa with Damir Fadri, I leave it here. When we return, come here. We got more. We will also be reading your messages. Send them coming in. Until then, hey! Wayo!
доход. Куку еще рома. It's the black pot, aka Kuku Shorum. Let's look at the next story. All right. And this one is very dicey. It says pig kidney transplant. Muslims, animal activists, ponder acceptance. Wow. Now technology keeps improving. Now human beings can get a kidney transplant without asking other human beings to cut one of their own and give to them. They can get that from the pig. Run the story. Watch this. And this is important. First living patient with transplanted pig kidney goes home from hospital. And who is this person? I'm sure it's a black man. Mm -hmm. They will always try it on a black man to see whether it works or not. Yeah, if you buy a dog and you want to find out whether it bites or not, they normally find black people to try their dogs on. When the dog bites, how deep the dog bites, then they can tell. We are the guinea pigs every time. But, I mean, this is science and it's good. I'm sure he voluntarily gave himself up to be, transted, to be transplanted with that kidney. And I believe he had given up all hope. But the pig's kidney... Save this gentleman here. He's called Rick uh, Slayman, right? Run the story, my youth. Oh, gosh. So the world's first living recipient of a genetically edited pig kidney transplant, Rick Slayman, was discharged from uh, the hospital Wednesday, that's yesterday, April 3, two weeks after his operation. Massachusetts General Hospital said in a statement, he is recovering well, and will continue to recuperate at home with his family. The hospital said on X, formerly Twitter, dash it away. Well, Islam is a very powerful religion. I love Islam. Islam says it doesn't like pigs. Look, if you cook pork in a certain bowl, 100 years later, if a Muslim gets to realize that pork was cooked in there, you'll never near it. If you are known to be a pork eater, hardly would an average Muslim be free to shake your pork hands. If a Muslim is dating a lady and he realized that the lady just finished eating pork before bringing her lips for a kiss, he'll say, Subhanallah. Okay. He will not kiss. On Tafrinano, on Finano, sorry. My brother, these are the things happening. But Islam says if your life depends on eating pork, eat it and drink the soup. If you go to a doctor and he says, hey, this is your sickness, you need pork, please look for a pig. Enjoy the pork soup, maybe with some lapewa. After that, go home and sleep. <laughs> so you see how Islam is. Again, if you are praying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim Malik, and you see a mad cow, or even a papoon, you know a papoon, these sheep that have those big, big horns, or the goats with the big, big horns, one of them is coming, kid, 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 heading towards you, especially when you bend like this. And he thinks that you are challenging it to, you know, how the cat, cat, you do Allah, Akbar. And the goat thinks that, or the sheep thinks that, hey, this guy is challenging me and he's coming towards you with full speed. Islam says, run, leave the prayer and run. When the goat is gone, come back and continue. So you see, it's a religion of common sense. Unlike some people who say he's praying, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba and 16 mosquitoes have come to stand on his face. They are sucking blood and biting him. He's waiting for the angels to come and remove the mosquitoes. There are some Muslims who also behave like that, but that is not Islam. 
Those Christians who behave like that, that is not Christianity. Safety first. You can't be in a building. The walls of the building are collapsing. Everybody is running down and you are standing on the building. Ba, 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 ba. I hold this building. I hold this building. Hey, Jesus, hold it. You will die in the building. And you go to hell. That's suicide. So Islam says, please, if you need a kidney transplant and it's coming from a pig or a dog, take it and come and stand and pray. Your life first. How about animal activists? They say no. Do not harm any animal. They won't agree. They, be, they won't agree that you have to kill an animal or deny the animal his kidney so that you can survive. I, the way I stand, I will not accept a pig's kidney even if I was dying. God forbid. And I'm told that, oh, it is the kidney of a pig that is going to help you. I will not accept it. The pig cannot give me consent. The dog cannot give me consent. It's an animal. Even if it's my pet, I will not do that. If a fellow human being comes to donate a liver or a kidney, I might accept it, but not an animal. Because the animal has its own rights. For me, the animal deserves to live. For me, until the animal can open its mouth and say, Black Rasta, you can have my kidney. The animal cannot give me consent. Some people will see this to be foolish, but that's okay. That's how animal activists are. Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you they will never take blood from anybody. They should use felling solution and blah, 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 blah to be able to do what, 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 what. So if you are involved in a bad accident and you are bleeding badly, Jehovah's Witness people will say no. And Jehovah's Witnesses do not also believe in self-defense. A man comes with a gun. I'm going to shoot you. Today you are going to die. Say your last prayer. Even if you can throw your leg and it will hit the man's head and you fall and die. Jehovah's Witnesses say that's murder. Let him kill you so that the honors would be on him to explain on that day. Hallelujah. So you see different religions and different views. As an animal activist, religiously, I might say I will accept it. But as an animal activist, my conscience will not allow me to kill a pig, to take his kidney. So I can live and it will die. It looks like I see myself as more important than the animal. The animal is my friend. It's not lower than me. Those people who call them lower animals, I just watch them and I say, who made you higher animals and who made them lower animals? Some animals behave better than human beings. This is a blackboard. A.K.A. Koko Show No More, where we speak truth to power. What do you think? Will you take the pig's kidney? Jeff, would you do it so you live? Like challenge. Would you take the pig's kidney so the pig will die and you would continue to live? Or oh, anybody? Broken. Broken. The kidney. No. And no cry, friends. And bro, bro, bro. Uh, 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 oh, my tree is running away. Brebo. No, brebo is liver. Kidney near friend is a crown. Yes. Osage for Duabil. Would you take the kidney of the dog? I'm sure for him, if you even kill 100 dogs and bring all their kidneys to him, you take, after that, you cook the dog meat and eat it with chichinga. To God be the glory. It's the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunemo. Come here, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we shall read your messages. Hey! Wayo!
Greetings, countrymen. My name is Black Rasta. When I was growing up as a child, there was something called a courtesy for boys and girls that helped to train us and raise us up in patriotism. But today, a lot of this patriotism has been lost. Today, our children are beginning to lose everything in terms of our heritage. They have lost out on our history, lost out on our greatness. It is on the bedrock of this. I am embarking on a nationwide tour of patriotism. Remember, it's patriotism, not politics. We shall go to all the 16 regions of Ghana. And in every region, we will organize students and speak to them about patriotism. We will organize a small quiz competition where we shall give prizes out. And these prizes are going to be prizes that are souvenirs from Ghana. Right after that, we will organize a certain concert, either in the market space or even on the streets, accessible to everybody. And we will catch the music lovers and deliver the same message to them. It's on the bedrock of this. I would like you to be part of this. Please donate to this great cause. We are raising a next generation of patriots. It's the lack of patriotism that is making us steal from our own country. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us feel like when we steal from the government, we are stealing from space. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us owe allegiance to some foreigners more than us. It's the lack of patriotism that makes foreigners come into this country and behave like demigods and we see them as such. My brother, my sister, Donate so we can move out there. Maybe you want to give us something else in kind. We are ready for you. Our numbers are rolling on the screens. And you can donate into our bank account or onto our phone number. And we will gladly appreciate and acknowledge you. This is the national patriotism tour that we have taken on ourselves to make sure that the nation, Ghana, stand tall again like before my name black rasta and i thank you for listening god bless you ghana shall prosper ghana will rise again bless you ghana shall prosper my name black rasta let's see your comments all right all right, so keep your comments coming in. Let's see what you think. Come here. All right. So, Harriet Amu, pretty Harriet Amu says, Welcome, Black Oyoy. Greetings to the team. And Dr. Honam, I like the name. He says, Truth to power, Dr. Honam. Ras Osage for Dua Bill, Tindan Doro, Goma Doro, Ayin Zor Bill, he says, Oyoy. Vim C. Come here. Vimsi says, fire! Brawa dude says, welcome, black. Nobody is bigger than the truth. Keep speaking truth to power. Oy -oy. One any boy says, welcome back, black. And human, remember human was here with us yesterday. He said, enough respect, black rasta, more fire. Come here! Goswe Jatta says, listening live. Oy -oy. Benjamin Achu says, bless you, my brother. And Abdul the Sheena, Shaba, uh, Amadou says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Greetings from Los Angeles. Woyoy, you are speaking the truth. Yes, and you are speaking truth to power. Keep on, may Allah keep protecting you all. More blessing. Nawune, Netete, Nawune, Gutikachi, Tablet, Tablet. I know good to catch a tablet, tablet. It says, I saw a board tablet, tablet. I mean, mm, mm. now, one pyramid says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Because of our religious mentality, some politicians do campaign using religion. That is why Baulaya is jumping from one church to the other for blessings. Now, one pyramid again says, Keep the fire burning, Grandpa. The ancestral connection is within you. Come here, my youth. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Let's look at the next badge of messages soon after this one. Next story. And we are ending it. Christian president 
Alan Kay, condemned by parties. Remember yesterday we carried a story that said that Alan Chermatin says it is time to have a Christian president. That man is not smart one bit. He's not. He has not apologized to the people of Ghana. He said because Ghana is a majority Christian nation, we must have a Christian president. He's thinking like J.B. Dankwa. Remember J.B. Dankwa who wanted this nation to be called Akan Land? He's thinking like Abena Frema, the woman that some people are rumoring that is going to be the running mate for Baomia. You remember what she said last week? If they are able to get 80% of Ashanti votes, they don't need any other vote from Ghana and they will win the election. It's not true. Of course, if you lose Ashanti region in any election, your chances of losing the election will be very high. Even though the northern region is far bigger than the Ashanti region in terms of population, the Ashanti regional population is dense. My brother, my sister, the Ashanti votes are very important. But even with that, you don't rub it into the eyes of people. Oh, yes, once we satisfy the Ashanti people and get their votes, we are okay. A right-thinking person doesn't talk like that. person with brains doesn't talk like that. Running a nation is not only about winning election. It's about serving the people. But our leaders and dirty politicians are only thinking about how to win the elections and not how to satisfy the people. They are not governing, they are ruling. In our country, our leaders don't govern, they rule. Check the difference. It's sad. And this man here wants to go the religious way. He's so frustrated. The two biggest parties, political parties in Ghana, have condemned him. The same way we condemned him yesterday. NBC joins NPP to condemn Alan Chermatin's call for a Christian leader. The opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, has joined the New Patriotic Party to condemn pronouncements by independent presidential aspirant Alan Chermatin that Ghanaians must elect a Christian leader. Whilst addressing congregants of the Church of Pentecost, Dr. White Assembly, over the weekend, Mr. Chermatin said, as a predominantly Christian nation, as Christians, it is our responsibility that we elect a Christian leader who is also a Christ-like leader. We want a leader who has the vision to bring hope to the hopeless. But we also want a leader who will be a servant leader to serve the people and not to lord it over them. Useless talk. He wants to get into the presidency on the ticket of religion. But what has he even done? To show he's a Christian. What has Alan Chermatin done as his quota towards the upliftment of Christianity in Ghana? Apart from being an ambassador and going around enjoying himself and his own whims and caprices, what has he done? Well, but the director of communications for the NPP, Richard Anyangba, says such comments do not augur well for national cohesion. He argues that the statement by the former trade minister is divisive and contrary to the religious inclusivity in Ghanaian politics. We must unite. Yes. Next page. That's what he said. But what is the NDC also saying about this? Now, on his part, the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mustafa Gbandi, said the statement could undermine the peace being enjoyed in the country. He accused both the independent candidate and the 2024 flag bearer of the MPP of resorting to some statements because they lack ideas. That's it. It's true. Baumia Zachariah is going all over the churches misquoting the Bible. To win an election, you must go to the churches. It used to be the chief imam's place where everybody would go for his blessing. I don't know what happened. There has been a shift. To God be the glory. It's the black pot. Let's avoid divisiveness. Let's run away from religious segregation. Let's run away from ethnocentricism. This is all racism. My name is Black Rasta. It's been the black pot. 
where we speak truth to power. Are you donating to the 16 regional tour of patriotism? We need that for our nation. I won't talk too much. I'll leave it into your hands. Our numbers are scrolling. If you want to send to us via mobile money, it is here. You can do that. If you want to send to us via, um, what is it called? The bank account. We are also here and ready to receive from you. Thank you so much to all those who have contributed so far and those who continually are uh, contributing. Bismarck Lai, thank you so much. He's contributed five times. We appreciate you and we love you. It's been the blackboard. Let's see your final messages and we are done. Francis Ampim says, Black, I'm in class enjoying the class. No one is bigger than the truth. Oy, oy. Abdul Dashina Shaba Amadu says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Greetings from Los Angeles. Oy, oy. Yakubu Usman says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Now, Gumti Kache, Bumso, Tablet, Tablet. Ami. May mm. God protect us from the Tablet, Tablet of Dunso. You have Dunso in your area. And then you want to just walk out on the street small and get fresh air. As you step out, somebody says, Ario, 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 because it's dark. We pounce on you before you realize it's beating you and broken your hands. It's called tablet, tablet. Doom sort tablet, tablet. Now I'm going to catch a doom sort tablet, tablet. Me, Ama Johnson says, corruption is sinking our beloved country really fast. Yes. Mohammed Banjaya one, aka MC Scorpion, inside a shima. He says, We are live. Run the rhythm, Brethren Black. Come here. Woyoy. And he says, All the crew invited to the fancy Gadam competition album tour. Celestial International School in an official town inside a shaman. All right. And remember, we're going to have the Salaga Soldier tour, and we shall involve you, Mohammed Banjaya one. So that you will take it around a shy man, the whole of a shy man. So we're going to have a conversation. Congratulations, my name Black Rasta. Congratulations to Fancy Gadam and all those people who are I mean, keeping the spirit of the North rising. Yeah, this one goes out to you. Blessed love. Come here. I'll catch you again tomorrow, same time. Until then, hey, wayo. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,